Hello, Jen. I'm Hello. so excited to have you here. Um, Very excited to do this with you. Yes, yes. So I like to start. Can you go ahead and give us your stats, your height, your weight, pre-op, post-op, surgery weight, all that jazz? Okay. I'm 49 years old and five foot six. My my highest weight was 265. And when I went in for surgery that day, I was 257. So I did not have to do like the liquid diet before surgery. So I basically lost like eight pounds during the course of my like pre-op, you know, weight period. But I did not do like a two week liquid diet before my surgery. Wow. So that's, that's. That's a rarity. A lot of people have to do like two weeks yeah. or like I didn't have to either. My BMI was just at 35. And so I just had to not eat after 10 o'clock that night, you know, before. But they 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 put me on a low calorie, you know, like your protein shakes and like one meal a day kind of thing. But yeah, so you didn't have to do the. I didn't have to do any of that. All I had wow. to do was liquids the day before so that, you know, there was nothing in my stomach, mm-hmm. but yeah, Sur- I didn't do yeah any sort of diet beforehand that was from my surgical team. Like I was trying to eat okay, but uh, they didn't give me anything beforehand. Wow. So surgery went, went good. Then you didn't have any complications or anything afterwards or I was like very blessed with not having any sort of complications. I never got sick. I never had uh, any sort of like adverse reactions to anything like to anything that I was eating or drinking I mean, I had like the usual gas pains after surgery, you know, which I think almost everybody has. And I, I stuck to like a liquid, a clear liquid diet for the first couple of days and then moved on to full liquid. So my, my plan was pretty much the same as most people's from what I can tell. Although my surgeon, I think, tends to be more lenient as far as what types of foods you can eat in different stages, which I found mm-hmm. interesting. And a lot of times people will be like, you can eat, you can eat that. And I was like, yeah, like he's, you know, it's just yeah. different. But I didn't have any like sort of, because I know some people have a hard time with the protein shakes, like they have a hard time drinking them. They made them nauseous and they made them, you know. Mm-hmm not feel good, but I didn't have anything like that. And I was able to wow. start my liquids pretty easily. Like I didn't have trouble getting my water down. Yeah. So I was very lucky because I know okay. a lot of people do have a rough start, you know? Yeah. You hear, you hear stories. So your surgery was on what date? March 1st, March 1st. And you had the VSG, right? Yes. VSG. Yes, okay. Yeah. That's like mm-hmm. me. So, yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I honestly, I'm kind of the same way. At first I started out like you, I had no problems. I honestly felt like they lied to me and they did not do the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it like, okay, yeah, I don't feel I had any those different. Thoughts sometimes. <laughs> like, did they actually do it? Can I see an x-ray or a picture of it or something? Because I don't think y'all did anything <laughs> until you take your third bite of food. And then you're like, yes. oh, the restriction yeah. is there. So yeah, yeah. I know they did it. But but that's awesome that you just like snuck on through and didn't have because you hear stories like people yes. have. It's really hard. Yeah. Um, or have, or have like either throw up quite a bit or have like all of a sudden they can't eat certain types of foods or certain foods like where they could before. And I haven't had 
any of that really. I, I tend to like, you know, with like the drier sort of meat, I tend to like feel like it gets stuck, mm -hmm. but it's not like, it's not like where I get sick. Like I was really worried about like that getting sick part of it. I didn't really want that part of it Mm where like you would eat something and you would feel physically ill. Like you were going to, you were going to toss your cookies or, you know, and, and I, I don't know that sort of like scared me, but I wasn't like, I'm not the type of person that feels that way in general. I think some people are have just more sensitive stomachs in general and they 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 get sick That's like me. that, do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I so can't I'm eat not meat. like that. I okay. I was a carnivore before. Yeah. Um, you know, because I was already, you know, gluten free, lactose intolerant. I always are I already had prop but so I prided my prided myself on being a carnivore because mm. um, meat's easy. I could go out to eat if I get a meat sure. inside. Right. Yeah. And I could eat, but I, after surgery, I can't red meat is like, I can't, I, and I still will do it. Don't get me wrong. We'll go to Texas roadhouse because <laughs> we're in Texas and I'll still buy the steak like this. Yeah. It looks so good. Yeah. And I can eat like two or three bites, but it's just something when it goes down, it's my body's like, my little pal just so sensitive. Like she's a yeah. total Karen. Like she yeah. is so <laughs> mean to me. <laughs> she's like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Why did you just uh, do that? Yeah. yeah. Forget it. See, that's yeah. good and bad. Yeah. So there's definitely like, I wish I had a little bit more of that Karen-esque. <laughs> yeah she's picky because mine's yeah. like yeah that's good yeah I like that that's okay but I'm just I just can't eat a lot of it you know I still have the restriction is still there so but also my I don't know my tastes have changed a lot since surgery so I don't even like every once in a while I want something sweet but I'm I was I was like a sweet person like I really liked dessert and candy and chocolate and cookies and ice cream and all that stuff. Like so that you're was a my sweet eater. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my thing. I was um, a Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper was my like, I couldn't eat fast food because I can't have wheat. So I didn't eat yeah. fast food, but yeah. Dr. Pepper was a crutch French fries. Mm. Anytime we go anywhere, I'd get French fries or tater tots because those are, you know, they fry those yeah. separately. And that was mine. Yeah. 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 But, but it's just, it's kind of funny. Like my, my, I guess the cravings aren't there anymore. And I know like they told me that that was going to happen and that they can come back. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not like thinking that the way I feel now is going to stay the same. Cause I know like eventually your restriction loosens up and those cravings can come back. But like the, the mental work that you do in the meantime is really the most important thing. Right. So, mm -hmm. and that's like, I really like on TikTok, I really focus on that stuff because I think for me talking it out helps me. So making the videos helps mm -hmm. me because just like, putting the words out there and then also getting the comments back from people saying that they're going through the same thing or how they deal with that particular issue mm -hmm. helps yeah. me as well. But I think like the mental work is really the, the work that needs to be done after the surgery. Cause like the food, I got it. Like I know, I know what I, what I can eat, what I can't eat. And mm -hmm. I know how much, and I know, you know, like, but it's it's all that stuff up there that that really like has been what caused the problem in the first place. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And so. and by posting videos because everybody does something different to kind of yeah. give back and you know we we totally inadvertently help ourselves at the same time and so it's, yes yeah you know sure and it's and it's so good that in and, and your videos are just so honest and 
you know, there, I wish everybody out there was like yours. And there's like a handful of people. I mean, a lot of bariatric patients, but like a really good handful of people. Well, a couple handful of people that are just really sincere and, and humble about it. And, but then, you know, sometimes you'll watch a video where I was very young post-op. And I saw a video where a lady said that she ate a Dairy Queen ice cream. I don't know if you've seen her. No, I don't. I don't know which one that is. She ate like a Dairy Queen ice Queen ice cream, and I thought, oh, I can. I'm so like you know. Okay, so after surgery, the the hunger's not there. Right. The, the food isn't there because you're not. You've cleaned out your house. You like you don't have it in your house or whatever. But the brain hunger is so overwhelming, I think, you know, do you have well, that that's where the you're mental, that's, the that's mental the work that I talk about is yeah. that it is like 90% in your head. And, oh, yeah. you it's know, like struggle, like after surgery, like we would go somewhere and we would order food and I would order like the size that I was used to eating and I'd be like holy crap, like I can't even eat like a quarter of this, but it doesn't like click, you know, like I would get like, I took my girls to like Starbucks and I got like a huge coffee and I was like, there's no way I can drink this. But you forget that it's, yeah, it's yeah. different now. And, but as far as like the, the mental, like that, what they call it, head hunger, like when you just want something that happens to me the same way it did before surgery because I didn't gain weight because I was eating regular portions of food or eating at regular times. I gained because I was eating large portions of food or I was eating when I wasn't hungry and I was eating because I was trying to solve a different problem in my head with food, which obviously doesn't work or hurts us, you know, negatively with, with weight gain. So when when that happens now i'm really trying to recognize it and be aware of it and do things differently than i've done in the past because i can't right now like i can't eat like a full sleeve of oreos which is what i would do in the past you know like i would literally like take a stack of oreos and that would distract me from whatever it is i was really dealing with mm -hmm. so it, it it's just i had to change my mindset in several ways which i'm still working on so i i also have to i also have to remind myself that those that way of dealing with things has been how i've done it since i was 12 so we're talking a very long time of yeah i saw i saw ways, you wrote you know so it, at 12 years old, your mom took you to, to Weight Watchers, you said. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that, completely that started the whirlwind yeah. of. Yeah. 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 Because like I was like chubby, but I wasn't like, I wasn't really that heavy, but she had dealt with her weight her whole life. And I think she was very worried about me having the same problem. Mm -hmm. And she felt that this was the way to help me with that. So, yeah. So, and I will never forget it. Like, I will never forget being in that room, you know, with a bunch of middle-aged women. And back then, they weren't as discreet as they are now. And you walk into the room and they weigh you in front of everybody. There's a scale, like, in the middle of the room. It oh, was God. so humiliating and, yeah. like, you know, and just, you know, really just put me down a path of like this, this terrible relationship with food where I had to earn it by doing exercise and I had to restrict things so severely that I would start to hide food and, and sneak food because, you know, my mom was aware that I was on this diet. And so and that really just sent me down like this really terrible path. And, and as I got older, then food became like an escape, you know, whenever I was dealing with something emotionally. So when I was in my late teens, my family and I moved to Florida from New York. And 
the moving truck that we had hired to move our stuff was stolen and everything that we owned was gone. Like we oh, woke up no. in Florida and everything was gone. So we started from scratch in like a brand new place where we didn't know anybody and and my dad was working three jobs. It was it was the pits, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when I that's when it just like completely like I completely went crazy with food. I gained like 50 pounds in a year while we were down there because that was just like my solace. I just ate all the time. And then yeah. I just carried that weight with me for years. Like I just couldn't get it off. You know, I would I would go on every single diet under the sun, every mm -hmm. single one. I don't think there's one out there that I haven't been on except for drugs. Like that's the only thing I didn't do. I did Atkins, Atkins, more times than I can count. I did Weight Watchers more times than I can count. I did Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, the Cabbage Soup Diet, the Grapefruit Diet, South Beach Diet. I did the HCG drops that you yeah. did, like with yeah. 500 calories a day. Mm -hmm. I did everything. Metafast? Single, did, you, did you ever do Metafast? Everything. No, I, did, I didn't do because I felt I, it was I like did. the same as Nutrisystem. So I just yeah. did Nutrisystem. I mean, wow. everything. So she and, just put you on this. Well, that was me. By then I was like in my twenties and, and I just kept doing it and I would lose like 20, 30, 40 pounds. And then something would set me off and I would cheat or what I felt was a cheat and, mm -hmm. or I failed. And then I would go right back to the way I was eating and I would gain it all back plus some. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just like my cycle for, for 20 something years, just, you know, and I, I just got to the point where I said, to my husband, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. And I'm so tired of failing. Like I am so, I am a business owner. I have three kids. I'm, I've done all these things in my life. And I, this one thing just keeps beating me and I don't know how, how to, how to fix it. You know, like I just, it was, it was really emotionally draining after a while because like, I just felt like the older I got, the harder it was. And I just didn't know what else to do. And I was like, I really think that I need to do surgery. I think this is like my 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 last attempt. Yeah. And oh oh my God. I can't over it. I can't tell you. I that just totally resonated in me because I I felt the same way. I would tell myself, like, I've we have four boys, the boys are great, you know. When, big house. We have this, we, we, I've done everything. I have a master's degree on this and that, but it's the one thing that I could not accomplish. It felt like I yeah. was a yep. failure in that area. Like, why can't I figure this out? And it's, it's, you know, this at, at the time when you're in that situation, because you've already put your body through this roller coaster of diets and, you know, all these things we take and put in our body, you can't physically lose weight anymore because, you know, I was insulin resistant. I, right. you know, I had hormones were jacked up my, I mean, I just, I was so messed up and I just, I could not lose weight period. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, and if I did, I'd gain it right back as soon as I yeah. messed up. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, that was, uh, that's, that's a total nightmare to, to be in that, that position. And, and, but I, I, I can't tell you how many people just heard you say that, that this is the one thing that I can't accomplish. Like I've done all these things, you know, and that's, that's huge because yeah. that's how we all feel like, and it's not so much a number, but it's, for me, it's like a body positivity whatever size, because on your thing that you wrote for this episode was if I could get to size eight, I'm happy. I'm okay. So it's not like, Hey, we're not trying to say I want to weigh a hundred pounds and I want to be a size two or something. We just want to be happy in the body that we have. And so it, yeah. it's not really a number 
or a size or it's more like a range. And and yeah, exactly. And I don't even know if that's going to be like, if that's going to be it, because I've never been there. So I, I might be happy at a 10. I might be like, I don't, I don't really know (laughs) where my goal is because I've never been there since I was a kid. So, so what does that feel like to have your body where you are now? Cause you look fantastic. Oh, thank you. (laughs) If it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's to go to town, hold on, just to get up in the morning, to go to town, to go run your daily errands and because you remember that feeling before surgery where right. you wake up, you wake up in the morning, you're consumed with what am I going to eat? And then you eat and then you feel guilty or whatever. And then yeah. at nighttime, when you go to bed, you feel so shamed within yourself. And you're like, tomorrow is going to be better tomorrow. I'm going to do this, this, this. And then right. the next day you fail and you can't stick to it. So what does that feel like to have this food freedom now? Well, that's, you know, it is a freedom and I, and it's funny because I just did a video on this a few days ago or a few weeks ago where I said, like, I'm not obsessed about food anymore. And my, I've been given a chance to correct my relationship with food, meaning like Halloween came around and in years past, it was like candy fest. And I would just like I would just go nuts. Like I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop eating it. And I would, you know, at night I would just grab like a ton of candy. I would just sit there and I wouldn't even like taste it. I was just like, I was just consumed with eating this candy because of whatever reason. And this year I just gave myself permission to have candy whenever I wanted it. And that completely changed the whole thing because like I was no longer obsessed with it because I felt like I couldn't have it. Instead, I was like, I can have it whenever I want. And I did. I had some candy the night of Halloween. I had, I don't know, like five or six pieces, the fun size pieces of the candy that I love, which is Reese's peanut butter cups, which are my absolute favorite. And they're still in the house. I don't really want them. And I know if I want one, I'll have it because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's not going to, I'm not going to gain five pounds from eating two Reese's peanut butter cups. Like that's not the problem. My problem was I would deny myself and deny myself and say, you can't have that. You can't have that. You can't have that. And then something would trigger me. I'd be upset or something. And that was the first thing I would go to is the thing that I was denying myself that whole time. And I just promised Mm -hmm. myself that this time around, I wouldn't do that anymore, that there wasn't going to be this restriction in terms of what I wanted, as long as it was what I really wanted. Like, because like, I could pass by a Duncan, and I could be like, Ooh, I'd really like to have a, a latte right now. But it's happening in the moment. And I'm like, I don't really want it. But with Halloween coming around, I was like, oh, I would really love to have some peanut butter cups. I haven't had any since I had surgery. I would really like to have some. And I kind of thought about it for a while. And I was like, yeah, I really do want some peanut butter cups. So I had some peanut butter cups and then it was over (laughs) instead of like that obsession that Mm -hmm. I had before. It's weird. It's such a weird feeling, right? It's so it's so weird to have that aha moment of like, I tasted it. I had it. Hmm. It was great. And it's over. It's weird. And I'm not like, yeah. I'm just not like, and, and I find that the foods that I crave are the foods that are good for me more often than not With my fruit on it. And I love having, you know, like, my chicken that I make at night with like, you know, the way I like to make it, like the foods that I now look forward to are the Mm -hmm. foods that I, that I want to eat that are good for me. Whereas before I'd be like, there's, there's a package of Oreos in the, in the cabinet and I wouldn't even taste them. That's the, you know, that's like such a crazy thing. Like when I think about it, like Mm -hmm. it was, 
definitely not for the food. It was something else that I was trying to fill and I would just like inhale them and I don't feel that anymore. And I hope it stays that way. And I'm sure like there's more mental work that I have to do down the road because right now I think I'm still in sort of like the honeymoon stage after surgery. I, like I'm eight months post-op, but I still I'm, feel like. I'm pretty like, sure you've conquered all the emotional eating and, you know, food addiction and, and all those things. You're doing amazing, I think. I mean, I'm going to be five months on November the 10th. So, I mean, I really think you're doing great as far as, you know, because it, because it's a huge transition from when before you have surgery and then after you have surgery, food just gets taken out of the equation, right? And yes. then so all of these things that we've had that we never really dealt with because- You have to deal food, with them now. Food yes. was the cover right. that- kept us from dealing with those things. Yeah. So you take food out of the equation, all those things come to the surface. Yeah. For some people, like for instance, there was a TikTok and you and I just saw it this morning and you replied and I replied. But the girl had bypass surgery like a few days ago. Yes. Or like a week ago and she was crying. Yeah, and she I, was hysterical. Yeah. And it was so sad. And you know what? And I posted because you know what she's crying? Because I had that aha moment after surgery was she's my, grieving grieving my it, yes. best friend just died like yes, literally absolutely you are in mourning yeah because your best friend just died like yeah he's gone like and you can't get her back there's yeah. no takesy backsies here you know yep, you're she's absolutely gone. right and she was crying and I felt such sympathy for her and because I know that feeling and yes. it's so sad and she's going to have to start to fight through that working on the inside yeah. and getting with her therapist and going yeah. to meetings and figuring out, but that person's gone. Yeah. I mean, that oh yeah. And I totally felt that too. And the first, the first two months were like, they're, they're, they're rough. They're not, they're not, mm -hmm you know, rainbows and puppies, like you really are coming to grips with a lot of stuff that comes up that you can't shove down with food anymore. Like, and there is definitely a grieving process with, with your old life because it was really surrounded by food. Like, man, I've been thinking about food and my weight since I was 12, like every single day of my life, which is yeah. crazy to me when I think about it, mm -hmm. how, how it has really been this, this, I want to say cloud, it's just been this cloud that has followed me through my whole life. Because every time I had to go for a job interview, I worried about how I looked. Every time I dated, every time I went to the doctor. I worried about if my weight was going to be, you know, affecting affecting something that was going on with me. Like every time I stepped out of my house, like I was so and I know there's a lot of women that aren't that way. And I I so wish that I had that confidence where they still felt so great about their bodies and about how they looked at no matter what weight they were. Mm -hmm. Um I was not brought up that way and i think like younger younger women now have a different view which i think is fantastic and i i'm so happy that it's like that oh because god yeah i think the the whole body positivity movement is just so beautiful and yeah. amazing and go for it girl yes because it's 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 not so much about a weight or a, a size that we're in. It's about that feeling. And yes. and no matter what size we are, we all want to be those people. I've yes. never wear I've never worn still to this day. I've never worn a pair of shorts in public. I've never worn a bathing suit in public. I yeah. wore a tikini with a pair of swim shorts. Yeah. Like I'm just like I wish I know. I could have just. And I love it. I love I, it. And oh, they, you I love know, that. And if you yeah. want to lose weight, you're losing weight because of your health and because, and honestly, that's what, that was what made me do this is because I, I felt like I was playing Russian roulette with my health. Like my family has a history of 
heart problems, diabetes, all sorts of stuff that's contributed to their weight because my parents are overweight and, you know, I grew up in a household where we did not eat well and I did not want to be, I didn't want to be that person that couldn't and I was already starting to feel it. My knees, my knees have given out on me several years ago. I had so many problems and like I'd go to like a amusement park with my kids and I could barely walk because my knees were killing me or I couldn't fit in the roller coaster because I was too big. Like I was there and I was like, I don't want to this life. I don't want to not be able to do things with my kids because of my weight and, and, or have diabetes and heart problems. That was really scary. And that's what pushed me. Like that was really where I drew the line in the sand. I was like, I have to do something that I've never done before. That's drastic. That would make me pause the next time I want to shove a cake in my face and be like, you cut out 85% of your stomach woman. What are you doing? Like this, you know, like, and I felt like that I needed that. I needed that drastic change in yeah. order to push me to do what I needed to do. And, you know, and it worked, I think, I mean, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I've got this down. Like, oh yeah. Like I got everything covered. Like I just undid 35 years of, <laughs> of, of disordered eating in eight months and I am, you know, completely cured. Like I'm not, but it's a start. Way. It's a start because but I, it's think, a start. I think the surgery, bariatric surgery is, is just, just like an intervention um, mm -hmm. for yeah. us because, you know, we all have that time in our life or whenever you, the, you know, whoever's listening decides, Hey, I'm going to get bariatric surgery. It's like, that's your moment. Like I'm done. I'm tired. Yep. I can't yep. live. And bariatric surgery is the intervention just like for an addict or a drug addict or a porn addict or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. So that's all this is, is, is our intervention. And, and so I think this is the beginning and, and I think that I think for the rest of our lives, we'll have to just always keep ourselves in check, right? Yes. Like yeah. we go somewhere, we're like, okay, I want to eat that. Why do I want to eat that? And yeah. so that's like a lifelong thing. And that's any addict. And we just happen to be food addicts. And, and I think a lot of know. people, I think when they get the surgery, I think some people feel like it's like a magic pill that's just going to fix everything and you're just going to drop all a ton of weight and you're going to be skinny for the rest of your life and that's it. And it's not like that's that regain is like always in the back of my head. And I know that the work that I do now is to prevent that from happening later and my surgeon said to me at my six month appointment, he said, this is the moment where what you do determines your fate. He said, there's been studies done on bariatric patients five years out and they studied where they started to slip. And it was at the six month mark after surgery. And he said, you're either going to continue on the path that you are now eating the way you're supposed to eat, doing the mental work that you're supposed to be doing, getting your exercise in as you're supposed to be doing, and you will keep going and you will continue. You will lose your weight and you will, you will be okay and you will continue for the rest of your life. Or you will start snacking when you're not supposed to. You will start Maybe you don't drink enough water anymore because you got busy or you start like saying, I can have just a little bit of this or I can have just a little bit of that. Or you start just like he says, it's very easy to go over your calories. It, you can do it. It's If you put your mind to it, you can definitely do yeah. it now. And he said those people in two years will have gained their weight back. He said, and and it's at the six month mark is when that decision happened and That's man did scary. that stick with me that stuck with me and i was like okay so i have to be extra careful now and i was like it was good that he said that to me because i it really kept me from 
I just, I've just been very focused since some then. fear in you. Um, yeah. That yeah, puts some like, fear in me. It's like a ticking time bomb. It's like, yeah. oh man, I gotta be careful. You know, like, yeah, yeah. It, it's scary. Cause all of us don't want to like, like I, I mean, just to go over, I, I, my highest weight was 211 and my surgery weight was 179 and I'm 147 now, but I'm 411. So I'm like, yeah a child size height <laughs> <You're fine> size. <laughs> yeah so 147 is still a lot for my and so I probably I'd like to lose 20 more but I'd be mm -hmm. okay at 10 honestly I'm okay now yeah yeah so I've only lost like 35 pounds but I'm okay like I did it for the reboot you yes. know, bariatric surgery you yes. know when you have comorbidities go like I'm a breast cancer survivor I insulin resistant, I had a hernia they had to fix, obstructive sleep apnea, thyroid, Hashimoto's. So I, I did it because I needed like a reboot to my system. Yeah. And and that's yeah. what this is. It gives us like a reboot. And so yes. I'm so much happier now, I think. And oh God, I, yeah. I'm but I'm terrified. I don't wanna gain my weight back either. Me you know, because because if I get up to one eighty, man, my my back's going to hurt. You know what I mean? And I mean, no, nobody wants to have those body pains that we had before. Oh God. Terrifying. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's been like the biggest thrill for me besides being able to wear clothes that, and I think they actually look good for now, but um, yeah, the, the, the body aches were like a big part of it, like back pain and knee pain. And that was, when that went away, like my knee still like flares up when I push it, but it's, I have to push it now. Like before, like it would just be from my daily living and I would go to bed at night. My knee would just be killing me every single day and that's gone. And gone. I mean, just to be not living with pain all the time, like that's it, that, that alone is worth it. What, what we went through like that was that was such a big deal now it's just now i'm like now it's like i'm playing with it like how low you know like let me see what happens if i can get down to this like now like i mean i'm technically i i would say probably in a in i've got like another like 15 to 20 pounds before what would be considered a goal weight for me based on my height mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Like, I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm happy now. I think I'll be happy in 15, 20 pounds. Okay. So I totally want to come move in with you. Cause I would like to know what can you run through what you eat in just a regular day and oh, what sure. kind of exercise do you get? Or okay. do you, do you exercise? Some people exercise, I think way too soon. Some people yeah. don't exercise. I mean, it, it just, everybody's different. Yeah. So one person does great with it. The other one doesn't. And so it's just, I'm just curious for you. Yeah. Well, exercise has always been sort of like my, it, my the thing I've hated. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've me too. never been, yeah. I've never been a big exerciser. I've never liked it. I like dancing. So I, for a while I, I was doing hip hop and stuff, but then my knees went out and that doesn't work for me anymore, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So so the exercise I've been off and on since I had surgery. So I didn't push it in the beginning. I didn't like go crazy with exercise in the beginning because I was like, okay, I'm eating 600 calories a day. I'm not going to also then like burn 300 calories. That's just crazy. So I, I didn't push it. I would say probably around five months I was going to the gym. But again, I think I went too hard too fast and I felt like it was draining me. And I was like, I felt like my weight loss was stalling when I was going to the gym because I was going five days a week and I was lifting and, and walking and doing cardio. So then I stopped. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to start walking. So then I did, I did this thing in September where I was like, had a, a daily walking challenge and every day I was outside walking and I posted videos and I was like, oh, and then my knee started giving me problems and I was like, oh, I'll take a couple of days off. And then I took the whole month of October off <laughs> so because I just like, you know, I just didn't want to do it. So now I'm back at the gym. So I started going to the gym this 
this week. I'm going three days a week. That's it. And I, I've pared down what I'm doing because I, I realized I really like doing the weights. I like weightlifting. It makes me feel strong. I just like it the best. So I'm focusing on weights, but I'm, I've pared down like what I'm doing. So one day I do like upper body, like, but just like push exercises. So I'm just, whatever is like a push, you know, with like chest put, you know, the chest press and stuff like that. Then one day I'm doing legs and then one day I'm doing pull exercises with my upper body. So like bicep curls and, okay, and okay. stuff like that and walking. So and then I walk on the treadmill, but not for an hour. I'm walking for like 15 minutes tops, like really not a lot because I feel like when I push it, then my knee either gives me problems or I get like sort of drained and overwhelmed. So I'm trying to be like just easing back into it. Um, just some kind of movement, some I kind think, of is, movement. Yes. is the key for everyone. Just yes. whether you're swimming, whatever it is you're doing, just some kind of mo- movement yeah. that you can do. I think a big thing is consistently. Yes, um, which I don't is, have down pat yet. That's yeah, something that no. I – but that's like my next thing. My that I, I feel like maybe it was all a lot all at once, like trying to – get used to my new way of eating and then also doing all the mental work and then, Oh, and then I'm going to exercise too. And then, and I think maybe it was just like trying to do it all at once. It was also new. So I think like now I really feel like I found sort of like my groove with the food part and the mental part of it. So now like the exercises like can be like more of a focus and I can, work on that consistency because I think that it's very true. Whatever we do, yeah. it just needs to be consistent. As yeah. far as what I eat, so at eight months, I am eight months post-op. So on an average day right now, I'm averaging about 1,100 to 1,300 calories depending on the day. And I'm my focus is on protein. So I get at least 90 grams of protein a day, if not more. So in the morning, I have coffee with a protein shake. It So it's a. That's a cup. go-to. That's my yes. go-to in the morning. First One thing. cup yeah. of caffeinated coffee, which I used to be three cups a day prior to surgery. Mm-hmm. And then I was, my surgeon said I couldn't have caffeine for the first six weeks after surgery. So I gave up caffeine a month before my surgery so that I wouldn't be dealing with caffeine withdrawal on top of everything else, which was like the saddest and hardest thing I've ever had to do (laughs) because I love my coffee so much. Yeah, I did. I gave it up for a month before surgery. And then six weeks after I was drinking decaf because I do like the taste of it and I like the ritual of it in the morning. So I was, I was drinking decaf. But as soon as that six weeks hit, man, I was like, all right. And I was back to one cup a day. So I have one cup of caffeinated coffee with a full protein shake. Then I'll have breakfast like a couple of hours later. And I, I kind of go between having like an omelet, which would be like one egg with like one or two egg whites and a little bit of cheese and sometimes I put spinach in it or now I'm trying to incorporate some more grains into my diet so I've been using like whole grain light English muffins with like one egg and a little bit of cheese. I am so jealous so you don't have any food aversions like you know anything that you I don't I can't eat dairy now or I can't eat like I said like I can pretty much eat anything so I I have to be careful jealous yeah oh see like now and I feel like it's a little bit too much because like I can eat whatever I want but I'm trying to stay like I'm trying to make really good Mm -hmm. choices so that that breakfast will last me for hours so I'll usually eat a very late lunch. Like two o'clock or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I kind of land also. And that'll be, I might have leftovers from dinner the night before, which dinners are usually just like chicken 
or I make a lot of chicken. I'll either make chicken or I'll do like ground turkey, like taco meat style. Or I will do like a lean beef. So it'll either be like, I don't eat that much beef anymore, honestly. But it'll be like a, um, like a London broil style meat that I'll cut very thin. Because I, 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 any sort of meat has to be either really small or it has to be in a sauce of some point. I, you know, I still have trouble with like a dry sort of meat. So the taco meat's really good because that's always kind of saucy and it goes down pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, so lunch will either be that or I'll make yogurt with some fruit and low sugar granola, which I've come to like absolutely, like I crave that. Like it's it's come to be like, one of my favorite meals, which I, I just never had it before. Oh, I but. wish I could eat a, a yogurt. I, I, there is a dairy free yogurt. Um, yeah. and I tried, I think when I was like a month or so out, but the dairy free yogurt has way too many carbs, like 27 carbs or some crazy number. And my dietician was like, I feel for you, but you can't have that. Like really? that's too much sugar. So they, it, so your it, dietitian restricts your carbs as much as, well, as... no, it wasn't so much that it was just the carb number, but it, yeah. it hurt my stomach. Like yeah, too, too much sugar when you're too early out. Yeah. Sugar, if it's too high sugar or high yeah. fat, it causes dumping. Like it makes your stomach hurt. And yeah. So I couldn't even eat the lactose free yogurt. Uh, yeah. I know. But I'm jealous. Thanks. Yeah, because I would love. I couldn't. I couldn't eat yeah. yogurt for like the first few months, like probably until like five or six months post op. I I couldn't eat it. It would. It would just. It may. It would get stuck, or like it was something about the consistency or something. But like after six months, like I I didn't have a problem with it. I tried it one day and I was like, oh, this is actually going down just fine. And so it's. Greek yogurt, like plain Greek yogurt, I eat three ounces of it, and then I do about an ounce of fruit, so it's usually blueberries or strawberries, sometimes a little bit of banana, if I'm feeling feisty, I'll put some banana in there, but banana fills me up, like, like it's, so I don't, I don't usually eat it, um, and then I, I do found, love banana, like, you know, yeah. whenever I want something sweet. Mm. And I'm having like, I want something sweet. I'll get like a half a yeah. banana and yeah. I'll sit there and I'll watch TV with my husband or four sitting there. Like, and I feel like I'm getting a, like a dessert now. Yeah. And, and I'll also, get like, it makes you, it makes you feel satisfied. Like it's yeah, funny some how like a half a banana with it can, like, or can do that for you now. But yeah. And then I found this really great low sugar granola on Amazon. It's by Diabetic Kitchen. And it's made with like nuts and seeds. And it is, it's so good. And you only need like a little bit, you know, just to give you a little bit of crunch and, and sweetness. Mm -hmm. So I put some of that in there. And then I started putting in chia seeds and hemp hearts because both of those are have protein. So it's a nice way to bump up the protein number for your meal without adding bulk because they're just like little bitty seeds. So I'll put chia seeds and hemp in there and then I top it with a little bit of sugar-free maple syrup. Mm, and it delicious. is so good. It's so, so good. good. It sounds good. It sounds yeah. good. So that's really sort of like my go-to midday meal. If I don't have that, I, I will also have like if I feel like my protein levels are high for the day, I'll have, there's a peanut butter that I love. It's not peanut butter, it's nut butters. I actually don't even eat peanut butter. It's like almond butter, or cashew butter by American Dream. Not, yeah, girl, seen a lot you're of preaching to the choir. Them, right? You're preaching to the choir. They are I, like holy, addictive. Who, <laughs> whose soul did she sell to the devil <laughs> to get that recipe? <laughs> It they're so, so good what 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 the hell can the numbers be wrong on the back like I don't understand I worry about like but you know I sh I should say because I'm barely five months out I did 
try to eat those. And I do love the cashew butters. The ringleader and Dunk a Spoon mm-hmm. are my, like, those are great. Because I'm yes. not a chocolate person. I've never been a okay. candy person or a chocolate yeah. person. Yeah. But the Dunk a Spoon and the ringleader, because I've never been able to eat sugar cookies. But are those sugar animal cookie? Yes. What are they called? Animal sugar animal crackers. Frost? Well, they're frosted animal crackers yes. or whatever. Yeah. And uh, because I've been gluten free for like fifteen years. Yeah, so but all their cookies are are gluten free. Yeah, they yeah. Use. So yeah, I get yeah. to eat it, and yes. I did try it because I was like, we're gonna see if it's gluten free. So I did taste it, and I waited because my stomach will blow up like I'm eight months pregnant. Like, oh my goodness. And I waited and I didn't get blown. I didn't blow up. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are gluten free. So she must be using certified gluten free extras in her little containers that she uses. Yes. So, but I had, I think I'm going to have to stop eating it just until I can finish losing because I don't know if that put me in a stall. Because it's definitely a trigger food. So I have to be super careful with it. Well, that's what I was going to say is like, I know that stuff can be a trigger food for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I am very okay with taking my two tablespoons and putting it on a rice cake and and I'm good. But I know a lot of people who like to go and just take a spoon and just sit there and like, and I could see why, like I can see that would be, so you have to be careful with their, with, with those nut butters. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's easy for you to do that, I would say like, don't, don't get them because they are very Girl, good. And it is a gateway drug. It yeah. <laughs> is a gateway drug. It's so I so try good. to like, I, t- so that's like, I save that for like once, once or twice a week, I'll have that for lunch instead of my, my yogurt or leftover dinner. Um, mm-hmm. And then like, if I want a snack, I have like, I'm, I'm a fan of the quest products. So I will have like, I have their chips protein chips or like one of their bars or something like that. But it, it depends on the day. Um, Those are so good. The ranch. They are. The ranch is like. Yes. Yep. Holy cow. Like. They're like regular they're chips. So, I love they're them. They're so like, good. Yeah. I know and some you, people don't care for them, but I, I actually really like them. So yeah. So snack, if I have a snack, it'll be because I ate lunch earlier than usual and then we usually don't eat dinner till like 6 30 7 o'clock so if i eat lunch at like 12 30 that's a big stretch of time and i'll usually have like a snack in there if i eat my lunch later then i then i'm fine until dinner time i might have like a decaf coffee in the afternoon with a protein shake in it maybe if i have something and then dinner like i said is usually like some sort of chicken like i just made chicken breasts that were stuffed with spinach and artichoke dip. So Mm, it was so easy and you just like split it in half and you put the dip inside and then you brown them like in a, in a pan and then you just bake them until they're done. And then the spinach and artichoke dip sort of like makes a sauce that goes with it. So it was nice and saucy. So it wasn't dry. It was so good. It's so easy. Sounds yummy. Um, Sounds yummy. Yeah. You know, one one thing I started since I have a hard time with meat and I'm still stubborn because we'll go out to eat or something and I'll still order what I ate, what I would have eaten before just because it's like in the moment, I'm so hungry. I want my food. Like I want to be normal. I've, you know, I don't know what's wrong with our brain, but we're like, I want to eat, I still want the 12 ounce ribeye with the loaded mashed potatoes and a loaded (laughs) baked potato and a margarita. And then it gets there and he looks at me like, baby, there is no way. (laughs) I, and he'll let me get it. He'll humor me and I'll take two or three little bites. And then I'm like done. And it's like, it's like, oh, you just stare at it. You know, we I think that I think for people who go out a lot, it can be a bigger adjustment. I think that if you were somebody who goes out to eat regularly or goes out to socialize with people, it I can see how it would be a huge adjustment post surgery because you can't do that anymore. Like 
we don't go out that much. I have three kids. It's expensive, man. Like we don't, we don't go out very often. So for me in my stage of life, it wasn't as much of an adjustment for me because we don't, we just don't go out as much as somebody, somebody else might go out. So the few times that we have gone out to eat, I have done the same exact thing. I have ordered what I would have normally ordered. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can't eat all this. But I brought it home and I had it the next day or several days or somebody yeah. else ate it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, we waste so much money. I didn't realize how much money we spent before surgery. And then after surgery, we waste so much money because yes. we still want to kind of our brain is like fighting us on that emotional, like we still want it. Yeah. The brain still wants it and we go get it. And then well, one, you can't eat the way you did before period. It's just, it's not going to work because right. right. that food's going to make you sick and nauseous and dump. And it's just horrible, but it's, it's crazy how that, how that kind of works out where you just, we still do that. I'm hoping that goes away. So I'm hoping I can conquer that brain aspect of, of being stubborn and yeah, thinking, you will. I just want it. I just you want will. to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it won't become as in, it, it, it becomes less important over time. I think also like, as you like continue to feel good and realize that you're feeling good because you have changed the way that you've eaten, that it sort of reinforces a positive change where you realize like that food is not as important as how you feel and it helps you make that choice easier like now if we get takeout or something I'll just like I'll just take a couple pieces from one of my kids plates or I don't even order food for myself anymore because I know I can't eat that much of it I'll just like I'll just have a couple pieces of your chicken or whatever and I'm fine and it doesn't bother me it really doesn't bother me um, because I know like I feel great and I'm, I'm so happy with how things have turned out. And I, there's no, there's no reason for me to jeopardize that at this point. Like it's just not worth it to me. So it comes back to that, like not being obsessed over it anymore. Like it's just not, it's, it's just different. It's just like, I'm, you feel in control and you feel like you have freedom, like you said earlier, to do what you need to do to keep your body well. It really does. For me, it really conquered a lot of those demons with food where I was just stressed out and sad and mad. And I just feel like I have control now and I can make good decisions and I see the results and I think that reinforces it. So it's been the best thing that I could have ever done. I wish I've done it. I wish I did it 10 years earlier. That's really the, my only regret is that I wish I had done it 10 years earlier because I lost those 10 years, but I'm headed I into I'm headed into 50 next year and I'm like, all right, I got, I got the second half of my life to. That's right. That's right. A little bit and, free of that, you know, so. Yeah. And there's so much you can do now and it it's like, it's a to total new beginning. So, so how, how has your husband taken it, this new gin and this new body and this new energy and vitality now and and your kids how how has that um, um I think they're, they're happy for me I think they loved me no matter what so my husband met me when I was when I was heavy and he's been he's been with me the whole time at that weight so he's he's funny because like he holds his cards very close to his chest he's not somebody who is very outwardly emotional but he's very supportive and has always been positive positive. and while he was nervous about me having surgery he could tell how much it meant to me but he never once pushed me to get it or 
he was, he's always just been supportive no matter what. So mm -hmm. he continues to be supportive and has always, whenever I've like hit a milestone, he's always celebrated with me and always been supportive, but he's really never, there's never been a focus on my weight with him either way. So it's always been a positive experience with him in terms of my weight and my and my kids I, it's the same thing like they I'm very I'm very happy that I feel like I did not transfer my my issues with food onto my kids so I've I was very conscious of that when I became a mom is that I didn't want to do that to them so I've always taught my kids to eat in moderation what they want and that I taught them the value of mac different foods and what they did for their body and taught them that I, my daughters are teenagers now so they're obviously they see things in the media and they compare themselves to other people that, that stuff is still there but in general I think like the issues that I had with food have not transferred to them so so with my own journey i've always tried to not vocalize what i was going through because i didn't want them to feel like that was how it should be for women like so i didn't talk about my weight a lot with my kids and i didn't like make it a big deal so when i went for the surgery they were concerned for me just because i was going in for surgery but since then they they really haven't it's funny they haven't really like said anything either way <laughs> like they've just like i'm just mom like they they don't they don't call attention to it well, um, that's great that's great and I think you know, it's good yeah yeah no that's totally my son was one son is he he is in the military and he's in italy so he didn't really even know i mean i didn't tell him I mean, you know, I don't see him very often. So, and then my middle son is 18. So I told him because he lives in the same city. And so he was, he was, he was very positive and say, great mom, you know, I want you to be happy and I want you to do what makes you happy. But after it was over and I lost, like when I lost my first 30, around 30 pounds, he was like, then he kind of confided and said, I was kind of worried. I was kind of scared for you, but now I can see that it, it turned out really good and it was good for you. And yeah. so and I'm sure your daughters feel the same way because it's, it's great. Cause you were in, you were trapped. Yeah. You were, you were yeah. trapped in this four walls of your own emotional roller coaster of food. And, yeah. and you just couldn't live like that anymore. And, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm sure that they see how, how oh, yeah, I'm you sure. Are. They do yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And they're happy and, you know, excited. So let me ask you, I like to ask before we end the episode, what advice do you have for a pre-op patient or a newly post-op patient or just anyone who's, who is trying to have their journey and struggling or what, what words can you say that would help someone else who's trying to go through this? I think for, well, for a pre-op patient, I would say, try to, try to instill the habits that you're going to need after surgery before you have the surgery. So that was something that I think really helped me out a lot. So my surgical team told me before surgery, about two or three months before, start waiting. For me, it was 30 minutes after you eat your meal, before you have something to drink, start to train yourself not to eat and drink at the same time start to slow down when you eat take your bite put your fork down chew it well swallow wait a bit then take another bite all those things that we have to do afterwards they had me doing before 
so that once I had the surgery, I wasn't also learning how to eat the right way and waiting for to take a drink afterwards. So that was super helpful for me. So I would say if you're if they're pre-op, definitely try to practice those new habits before you have surgery. Also giving up coffee. If you have to give up coffee, it's always better to do it before surgery than afterwards. And then for newly post-op patients, I would say just give yourself grace and realize that Things don't change overnight just because you had the surgery. The only thing that's changed is that your stomach is a lot smaller or or you have a pouch now instead of a stomach if you had bypass, but that you don't have to be perfect and things are not going to be instantly changed, especially when it comes to your mental health. And then that is going to be something that you work on for a very long time. But if you do work on it, you can change it and that you're capable of doing this. Because I think a lot, I hear a lot of people say, like, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen for them. Like, even though they've had the surgery, they're like, I'm going to be that person that doesn't lose any weight after surgery because they've failed so many times before. And I totally understand that like what makes this time different and what makes it different is that you've been given a reset you've been given a reboot like you said where you know you've been given a great tool that can make the difference this time if you do the other work if you do the work that you need to do with your mindset and with just giving yourself time to get everything down you'll get there. Even when you have that stall after two weeks that everybody has and everybody freaks out. Like I just, a friend of mine just had surgery at the end of October and she emailed me today and she was like, I haven't lost any weight in almost two weeks. I'm freaking out. I just had the surgery. I was like, everybody stalls at three weeks out everybody and everybody freaks out because they think it's not going to work and they're doing something wrong. I'm like, you can't possibly be eating more than you need to. It's your body healing. Just give it time. And I think that's like the biggest thing. It's just, you have to just let the process work and just do the work and it'll, it'll happen. That's great. That's great advice. I think that that's perfect. That's everybody needs to all those tips. I think that's a strong way of thinking as far as, you know, the, I mean, cause I'm, you know, you're talking to me cause I'm had a stall and lost it. I was like, what? Yeah, I know. We We all do. (laughs) Every day we're losing half a pound, a pound every day. And then your inner thoughts. I mean, I, I call her my inner bitch because she is so mean. She, you're losing half a pound, a pound. And you're like, Oh, it doesn't matter what you eat. You're going to lose weight anyway, sissy. So just go get whatever you want. It's like, no. So Um, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So no, that's, that's, that's great advice, but thank you for meeting with me today here. Yes. Thank you for having the episode. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to continue watching your journey on TikTok and I'll definitely share your info in the show notes and. I wish you the very best. Thank you. Thanks so much. It was great talking with you. Yes.